In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to make this do this without the need of this. What you're going to need to be able to complete this tutorial is an Arduino. Here I have an Arduino Uno. You're going to need a cable to connect your Arduino to your Linux computer. Here I have a Raspberry Pi, which I will be using as my Linux computer. If you're using one of these, you're also going to need a power supply for it, as well as a way to actually access the Pi. In this case, I'm using an Ethernet cable, and I'll be accessing it remotely, remotely, that is, headlessly. Connect your Arduino to your computer. All right, so here I've SSH'd into my Raspberry Pi so that I can access it. The first thing you're going to want to do is update your repositories. Type in sudo app-get update, and this will take a moment. To be able to upload programs to our Arduino, we're going to have to be able to compile them. To compile them, we're going to need software that allows us to do this. So we have to download it. Type in sudo app-get install arduino-mk. I've already done this, so this shouldn't take me too long. If it prompts you asking you yes, no, do you want to install it? Obviously you do, so hit yes or why. Now, I'm in the root directory here of uh, the Raspberry Pi. Normally when you run the Arduino IDE on your Pi or any other Linux machine, it automatically creates a folder for you called Sketchbook. You may or may not already have this folder depending on whether or not you've used the IDE before. I'm going to follow the same structure the IDE does for uh, organizing files. You can change this up if you want, but I'm going to create a directory here called Sketchbook. Uh, so we can go into Sketchbook now. We see that it's its own empty directory. Now let's take a look at all those files we just downloaded. Uh, type in cd slash slash usr slash share slash Arduino. And this is the location of that Arduino-MK file set that we downloaded. We have, some exam we have an example folder here, and this has example sketches just like the IDE. We have our default Arduino libraries, and most importantly, we have our Arduino make file here. And you can open this up and take a look inside if you want to learn a little bit more about how that works. So we, to be able to compile a program that we have, we need to reference this make file. So it's important to know where these files are housed, and that's why I'm showing you this. Let's go back to our sketchbook, cd tilde slash sketchbook. And now we're in our sketchbook. Let's say we create a file here, a, a program uh, to blink an LED. I'm going to call it blinky.ino, so nanoblinky.ino. It doesn't have to be done using the text editor nano. You could use any text editor you want as long as you preserve the .ino uh, ending there. So I'm going to create this file and we're going to create a simple sketch that just blinks an LED. So first we're going to uh, create our setup function and we are going to set the pin mode of pin 13 to be an output. And then we're going to begin our serial monitor with a baud rate of 9600. And then I'm going to create the loop function. And in the loop function, we're going to digital write pin 13 to be high. And then we're going to delay for one second. And then we're going to digital write pin 13 to be low, turning it off. And then we're going to delay for one second again. And then we're going to print a line that says hello world on our serial monitor so we can get that output if we want. To get out a nano, hit control X and then hit Y to save. And it's gonna ask you if you wanna call it blinky.ino, which we do, so hit enter. And now we have this file, blinky.ino. Well, this is written in C++ and the Arduino doesn't understand that. It understands you know, the, lang the, the commands that the processor understands. So we need to turn this C++ program into a a file set that the Arduino can understand, and that's what this Arduino.make does. Now, we could copy this into our sketchbook, or we could make a child make file, which I think is much easier and much cleaner to do. So let's do that now using nano. So type in nano, capital M, make file. And we're going to have to point it to that real make file that I mentioned earlier. 
So first we're going to set up what the Arduino directory is, where it can find default libraries and things like that. So that's usr slash share slash Arduino. We're then going to have to tell um, the make file where to find the Arduino. And on a Linux system, it's under your devices folder, ttyacm asterisk. The Arduino always shows up as like ACM0 or ACM1, depending on how many devices we have connected. This works if you have one Arduino connected. So I'm just going to search the TTY ACM uh, devices for the Arduino. Then as I'm programming, I might one day want to import a library, like something that I download off the web where I write my own, in which case we're going to have to tell the system where those libraries can be found. And the regular Arduino IDE keeps those libraries inside of the sketchbook under a a uh, folder called library. So I'm going to preserve that same structure. We have to create this folder. Uh, we're also going to want to say what our board is. I mean, remember how in the Arduino IDE you have to choose whether it's an Uno or a Mega 2560 or something like that? So our board tag here, because I have an Uno, is going to be Uno. Then finally, we need to include the actual make file, which again is found under USR share slash Arduino slash capital A Arduino.mk. And that's it. So control X to get out, Y to save. Yes, we want to continue calling it make file. And now we're done. I'm going to create that folder now called libraries. And so now we have that folder. Now we have blinky.ino. We need to make this into the files that can be uploaded to the Arduino. To do this, it's quite simple. Just type in make. And so what it's doing now is compiling our program for the Arduino. And you can see a whole bunch of different details here, like it's the ATmega328P, what our clock frequency is, all that sort of stuff. Now if we list the files here, we see this folder called build-uno. And inside of this folder, you see a whole bunch of files that are needed to be able to get the program running on the Arduino. So let's go back a bit into our sketchbook folder here. Now what we have to do is upload it to the Arduino. So type in make upload. And so right now it's uploading, it says it's done, thank you. And if we take a look at the Arduino, we can actually see that that LED for uh, digital 13 is blinking on and off, one second on, one second off. Pretty cool, right? Now let's take a look again here at our sketchbook we see build uno directory. Let's say we don't want that kicking around because it's cluttering up the, the sketchbook directory here and we just don't want this. So if you type in make clean, what it does is it deletes that folder. See, it's deleted. And we didn't change anything on the Arduino because we didn't ask it to. So that's pretty neat, right? Three separate steps. You make it and then you upload it and then you clean up after yourself. And conveniently enough, you can combine all of these into one statement. So if I type in make upload clean, it's going to make the files, upload the files, and clean up. Now I can't really demonstrate that unless I change the uh, Blinky program here. So if I change Blinky so that instead of on for one second, off for one second, I'm on for say a tenth of a second, and then off for one second, I save that. Now I can, I've now made a new program effectively. I can make it, I can upload it, and I can clean it all in one line. And now, if we take a look at the Arduino, we see that, yep, it's blinking really quick on for a tenth of a second, and then it's otherwise off for a full second. And if we take a look at our sketchbook folder, we see that there's no build-uno folder there. Nice and clean. Now, if we take a look at Blinky again here, we see that we're, trying, we're starting a serial communication here, and then we're trying to print the statement, hello world. How do we read this? Well, there are a few pieces of software you can download that allow you to read uh, the serial communication output of your Arduino. Uh, Minicom is an example, Picocom is another one. There are different tools you can use, but if we want to stay with the same theme where we can type in like make upload clean, but we also want to be able to see uh, the serial output immediately afterwards, we're going to have to download an extra piece of software called screen. So sudo apt-get install screen. I've already done this, so it really doesn't take long for me. And now we have that installed. So now, if we want to open up the serial monitor, we can type in make upload monitor clean. 
So it's going to compile the software, upload it, open up our monitor, and clean up the directories afterwards. So let's do that. And so it automatically jumps to opening up screen and printing our statement, hello world here. Now we can't really interact here and we don't see any options anywhere on the screen. So let's say we're done reading this. To get out, we hit control A and then control D. And what that does is detaches us, D for detach, detaches us from the screen. The screen is still running though. And if we take uh, using the command list, so screen dash list, we see that that screen is still running, but we are detached from it right now. We can return to it by using the command R because it's the only screen available. It's going to default to that one. And we see that the phrase hello world now has populated the entire screen. So what's happening here is it, it, it's, it's continued to be latched to the Arduino, continuing to run even if we're not looking at it. It's kind of like we're looking at a different window. Again, control A, control D to detach. So what this means is if we're currently receiving through serial communication, uh, uh, a serial output from the Arduino, we can't upload to the Arduino again. We're going to have to kill that screen, that screen that's still running. So if we type in screen dash X, that means we're sending a command and the command we want to send is quit. And now if we type screen dash list, we see that there are no screens to be found, it means we've severed the connection and uh, it means that we can re-upload code to the Arduino if we wanted to. Now eventually you're going to want to create additional programs and so we have blinky.ino here and let's say we wanted to create a new version. I'm going to copy blinky.ino to blinky2.ino and blinky2 is going to be much more complicated. If we go into blinky2.ino all I'm going to do is change it so that instead of on for a tenth off for full it's going to be on for a tenth off for a tenth and we're going to say to hello world so it's a completely different program. Now the problem is, is if I type in make here, it's going to throw an error saying that this make file doesn't support multiple INO files yet. It doesn't know whether you want to do this file or create this file, upload this file. So normally what the Arduino IDE does is when you create a new script, it puts it in a folder, thus separating the file such that you only have one .ino file per folder. So what we're going to have to do is create a new folder called Blinky, I'm going to call it Blinky2, and I'm going to move Blinky2.ino to Blinky2, and I'm going to call it Blinky2.ino. There we go. So now I have Blinky.ino in the sketchbook folder, and I have a Blinky2 folder, and I have my blink2.ino file. Now if I try to make it, it's again going to be upset because there's no make file in this directory. So I'm going to have to go back into the sketchbook directory and I'm going to copy make file to blinky2 and I'm going to call it make file. Now if I go into blinky2, we have both blinky2 and the make file. And now if I type make upload monitor clean, it's going to reference the make file locally held in that directory with the blinky2 file. It's then going to upload and then it's going to open up our monitor and it says to hello world and we see it's populating really quick and if we take a look at the LED here we see that yes indeed it is blinking on and off quickly. Control A, Control D to uh, exit out and we see that there are no build-uno files here. So there you have it. That's how you can start structuring your code uh, in different files. And you just have to uh, copy this child make file over every time. And uh, you're able to create a whole bunch of different files and still preserve the same structure as the Arduino IDE in case you want to open up that IDE and start using, uh, uh, using it again to upload code. So there you have it. How to upload files to the Arduino using the terminal. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. For more tutorials like this, visit thezanshow.com.